God doesn't want us to be uh, clones of one another. We're, we're called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We're talking about family discipleship and about the spiritual leadership of fathers in the home. And, um, you know, I, I love talking about family worship time. It looks different for every family, you know, yeah. for some families and depending on the ages of your children, for some families, it could mean, you know, reading a portion of a Psalm in the morning yeah. and singing some worship songs and praying, or it could just mean reading, you know, an entire chapter of a book of the Bible. Um, and, and learning. And I think sometimes, and I would love for you to, to encourage parents in this way. Sometimes parents feel like, well, I don't know enough about the Bible. Hmm. I, I'm not well educated in the Bible. I, you know, have a hard time understanding it myself. So how can I teach it to my children? How would you encourage that parent? Yeah, I, I would encourage uh, that parent by saying that God knows exactly who you are and he knew who you were uh, before you had your children. And he nevertheless brought your children through you for the express purposes that you would serve them in this, this manner. There is no particular gift set that is a prerequisite. There's no particular educational uh, uh, matriculation that's a prerequisite for doing this. Uh, one of the greatest things we can do uh, in uh, endeavoring to disciple our children is to show them the humility that, that we need to live as Christians ourselves, uh, to show them, hey, I don't know this, let's go and learn this together. Show them how uh, to, to study. Uh, I'm thinking about a particular family in our local assembly where we had this exact conversation uh, where a father said, Abe, you know, I, I can't teach the Bible like you. Uh, and I said, man, it may be God is calling you simply just to read the scripture with your That's family. Right. Uh, God doesn't want us to be uh, clones of one another. We're, we're called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. So the Lord isn't requiring you or your family be identical and do exactly what my family does or to do exactly what anybody else's family does. What has God placed in you and is calling th through you? Uh, to serve your family. The other thing I forgot to mention this earlier that we do is that we always in endeavor to end the night uh, praying together uh, mm. tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you know, I have five children. I used to go to their rooms with each of them. We have too many of them now. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we summon them all to our room, my wife and I's room, and we spend a time of prayer together uh, in, in the evenings to, to end our days as well. But again, uh, this is not something that someone should mimic. We can take examples that other people have in order to glean from but not to hold them up as if they are the standard. Jesus Christ alone is the standard. And so I, I just want to, again, encourage the parents, uh, God knows who you are. God knows yeah. what you have. God knows your ability. And what and how is God moving you to serve your families is the question or is the issue that you should be confronting with the Lord as opposed to trying to hold up myself or any other individual as the standard that we are to emulate. Christ is the standard. Right. So let's follow him. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, you know, it's really interesting because I, I love that it's it's not as complicated as it has to be. It can be as simple as opening the word of God and reading. And for goodness sakes, if even if you are completely illiterate and you could not read a single word of, of the Bible, we are in a day and age where you can open up your smartphone That's and right. push play That's and right. have it read to you. Um, That's right. But it becomes a way of life. So we're talking about priorities in spiritual leadership. And we talked about um, how kind of your three roles are the family, the church, and your your community um, and your role at, on national radio. Um, next to family, what would be your next priority? Would it be the church or would it be your influence in society? The local church. Uh, the, the next priority is the, the local church uh, where I serve um, because that is the immediate uh, local assembly that God has planted me in. Um, one of, in, in addition to the forfeiture that has happened in the family, one of the great travesties of, of modern Christendom is we've kind of uh, turned what God ordained for it to be worshiped together into worshiping beside one another. Um, we in, 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 in seek to include uh, as a part of our corporate worship every weekend, a time of breaking bread together and fellowshipping together. So we have fellowship meals together. We don't have kind of as a traditional church service. We spend hours and hours and hours together uh, because the truth is we need one another. Yes. And as things become more and more challenging and more and more difficult, it, it becomes uh, a great obstacle, a great impediment to obey the scripture's commands concerning bearing with one another and one anothering if we don't even know each other, you That's know? Right. And in many ways, we've allowed kind of the world's 
pace and the world system to kind of move us to where we worship beside one another. We don't really know each other. We rarely even know each other's names, let alone yeah. know each other personally. And so in addition to, uh, I would say subsequent uh, or second to, to the to my immediate family is my commitment to our local assembly. Uh, that God has planted us together. He not only made us, uh, he didn't just connect us like Lego pieces and that's right. my dad peeking through, but he's made us members of one another. And what I found is that as a result of, of, of doing life as a local assembly in that way, it's kind of uh, eliminated the distance that would allow for accusations and invectives and things to be hurled because we, we, we have, by God's grace, grown into a tight knit family of believers. And so follow my immediate family. My next commitment is to our local church. So, and, and being committed to your local church, um, and, and being one who leads your local church, how do you help to equip the families, the parents in your church to lead their families in their homes? Yeah. So one of the things that God has moved us to do is that we have family shepherding meetings, Mm -hmm. um, to where we specifically spend time praying and teaching the scripture and devising strategy with the families in our local assembly to empower the fathers to lead their families. Uh, we specifically take time to do this because a lot of the co- things we're talking about right now, those questions come up frequently. So a practically, how do we do this? Practically, how do we do that? So we invest time in, in doing that. We also uh, invest time in cultivating, some may describe it as a kind of Titus II type of ministry among, among our women uh, but we do that, and a part of that includes um, sound and, and robust theological instruction. You yep. know, it's it's unfortunate in too many instances when you talk about serving women in ministry, it's kind of a, a, a kind of self help type of psycho babble, frankly. Right. Uh, when the truth is that all members of the Lord's bride need robust theological training, and it it, it strengthens the church as a whole when we have yeah. those who are entrusted with the care of the most vital resource in the local assembly, which is our offspring. Right. Uh, it, it strengthens the church as a whole for the members of the body to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. And Ephesians 4 explains that very, very uh, plainly. It, in, though it is the church's, I'm sorry, though it is the parent's responsibility to serve as a primary resource for discipleship and instruction for subsequent generations, the church has a role in equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And so we take that very seriously. And so we endeavor to invest in the people so that they may be fortified in training and instructing and shaping their families. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 